Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris. I am the runner of the uh, channel, Team Phoenix. I'm just going to give an analysis of Chris Watts's router log, which is included in the digital discovery. For anyone who's interested in looking at the files, it is in a zip file, which is called 2018-273 hyphen s6 hyphen attachments dot zip they've put the router log in there in a word document and it also contains six images uh, of the router interface web interface um, which were taken by the special agent tory smith the fbi agent I think it was done on the 15th of August. Now it's very important to note, as Agent Smith has noted in the discovery, that there is a two hour discrepancy in the router times. The router was set to Pacific time. Local time in Colorado, of course, was mountain time. So the router log is two hours behind in its times. So that's just something that you need to bear in mind when you're looking at the log. So um, this is going to be probably a little bit boring. Um, it is very t it is technical, is, there's no denying that. Um, I've spent 30 years working in, uh, in IT uh, in both system support and networking. Uh, I'm a Microsoft certified professional many years ago. I'm very confident in and I know exactly what I'm talking about when I look at this router log. Now I know that other people have anal analyzed it, but you know, I feel that the whole analysis was full of conjecture, supposition, uh, mis misinformation, unfortunately. Uh, so hopefully I can just make things a little bit clearer in my analysis. So we can see from this, uh, the Netgear model was a Netgear WNDR 4500 version three. It's a Netgear router. I know there was some talk a while ago that he may have turned this off during during the crime. I'd be very surprised if that was the case because most Netgear routers, uh, when you reset them or restart them, switch them off, restart them, root logs are cleared they start again because the root logs generally are stored in what's called volatile memory which gets wiped when the device gets reset so the fact that the log is present there from kind of the 12th through to the 13th through to the or 12 yeah 12th through to the 15th uh, i think it probably you know well, it's off the fact that the router would have been switched off or restarted because you would have had you wouldn't have had the log starting from the 12th basically in my opinion anyway so the most important pieces of information this is the fbi agent looking at the web interface of the router now these are the devices that were attached at, at that time if your device is you know if you do it, maybe you had a phone that just connects to it when you're at home, but then you're not out of the home at that time when he's looking at that at the router, your device isn't going to be on there. So these are devices that were connected at that time. So the most three most important pieces of information. Okay, probably the most important is the MAC address. Okay, MAC address is a completely unique identifier of a device it's called the machine. So like media access control. As I say, it is a completely unique identifier to that device. There is no device in the world, no two devices in the world that have got the same MAC address. Okay. And also from a MAC address, from the first six digits of it, you can work out the manufacturer of that device from those first six digits by doing a MAC address lookup, okay? When uh, manufacturers, they buy these addresses in blocks and um, 
when it's when it's bought it's assigned to that manufacturer so you can actually tell if you don't know what the device is if you just got a mac address at least the least you can tell from it is the manufacturer of the device so, well you know it's like an apple device or you know a netgear device or or anything anything um you then get the ip address which is kind of like uh, a token if you like it's, it's a token that that the router gives a device it gives it a, an ip address to say there you go there's your token to the network you're allowed on you're allowed on the internet you know a router basically if you don't know a home router a broadband internet router it's basically just like a gateway to the internet you know it's like a box with two sides you've got the internet on one coming in and then on the other side you've got all the devices going into it and the router acts as a gateway to allow devices to go through it and out onto the internet basically and every time a device goes out onto the internet or wants to go needs to connect to the internet it needs an ip address okay so without an ip address it won't be able to connect and each device on that network is given a unique address Okay, now the last thing, which is an editable field, which um, is actually set on the device itself by the user, is the device name. So we've got someone here, we can see Apple TV, Shenan's iPad, Chris's Apple Watch. They would have been set on the device by the owner, or somebody would have manually put that name on there. So basically, it helps you identify what that device is. Like when you're connecting to it on a network or if you're bluetoothing to it or something like that it's just a way that you know exactly what it is you can call whatever device name whatever you want and of course someone here we've got unknown so if you've got unknown what you can do is you can look at the mac address like i say first six digits you can at least find out who is manufactured by okay it won't tell you the model or anything like that but you can at least tell who it was manufactured by Now, as I say, there are going to be some devices on the log that aren't on here because they weren't connected to the router at that time. So just bear that in mind when we look at the, uh, at the router log. So here is the router log, as exciting as it is. So there they put it in a Word document. It runs from Sunday, August 12th through to Wednesday, August 15th. Now, what I've put in bold on there is the device name. Now, like I say, some we knew, some we didn't. So some we've had to do a little bit of guesswork. You know, if we just had the MAC address, we didn't know the device name. Like I say, you can at least look up the manufacturer of the device and that gives you a pretty strong idea, you know, as to what it is depending on, obviously, what devices you believe are in that home and, and that kind of thing. So the first two entries on there, Sunday, August 12th. So we need to add two hours, 9.26 in the morning, Chris's Apple Watch. And you see a few entries there. Now, just as a side note, there are quite a few entries in this log, which are down as what are called DOS attacks, denial of service. Some you'll see is SYNAC, which is synchronization acknowledgement. Some you'll see is an RST scan, which is port scan. Some you'll see is TCP UDP charging. Okay, now these are basically very common in Netgear routers. They're very common in a lot of people's home networks. Denial of service attack is basically where a scammer or cyber, uh, you know, cyber criminal, or whatever, will send thousands and thousands of request to a, maybe a server on the network to try and take it down okay now you'll sometimes see these intermittently on home systems where a server somewhere out on the internet you know it can be anywhere in the world just kind of sends random packets out to all sorts of ip addresses one which might be yours at home um, it's just kind of fishing to see if you've got any vulnerabilities in your router at home and they say they do them in various different ways they're called these different things um, but basically bottom line the fact that the route is logging these it's telling you I thought this was done on a service attack so I've blocked it I've blocked 
block that communication off. Okay, as simple as that. You know, these are not um, suspicious activity. It's not anybody trying to securely log on to anything or anything like that. It is purely just nonsense traffic. You wouldn't even know it was going on uh, until you looked at your router log. You wouldn't you wouldn't know anything was even happening to your internet. And as I say, they're blocked. The router is blocking them. It's telling you it's blocking them. You'll see different IPs on there and ports. So they're from all different parts of the world. Often they come from China and Russia and stuff like that. You know, it's just irrelevant. It's irrelevant traffic. Okay, nothing suspicious about it at all. Okay, any respectable IT or network professional will tell you exactly the same. Okay, nothing suspicious. These aren't used for anything like secure logins. You know, to to Vivint or to the net local network or to somebody's Apple device, anything like that at all. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to skip past them and ignore them. Okay, so as I say, early entries on Sunday, Chris's Apple Watch, Chris's Apple Watch. Um, now you'll see that I'll put Apple device two. There were actually three Apple devices that show in the log. I know the Apple devices because, it, uh, like I said, it gives you the MAC address, and from that you can work out the first six digits the manufacturer. I know they're Apple devices. Okay, but there's nothing in here which tells us they're not, you know, what they are. You know, we haven't got a device name or anything like that. So we have to sort of do a little bit of um, detective work, if you like. You know, there's a little bit of a guessing game. This is why it's not 100% with this kind of thing. You know, you've got the MAC address, you know it's manufacturer. You know, in this instance, as I know, it's an Apple device. But the fact that Chris and Shannon had numerous Apple devices in their home, I can't be 100% 100% certain which one it is. I know they had an Apple MacBook. Um, Shannon and Chris both had Apple watches. Um, they both had iPhones. Um, you know, so that has to be taken into account. Chris, of course, had a work phone as well, which was an Apple phone. So there's a couple we can rule out just by looking at this. You know, we can see on there Shannon's iPad and Chris's Apple Watch are registered on there. Uh, you know, so we know we're going to know what they are just by looking at the Mac and matching up with the device name. In the discovery, um, Chris mentioned that the Apple book or Apple MacBook barely ever used. You know, it, it was Shannon, you know, she barely ever used it. So I think it's pretty safe to rule that out. So that leaves Chris's personal phone, Chris's work phone, and Shanann's Apple Watch. Now, one of the devices, which I've called Apple Device One, I'm pretty sure it's Chris's personal phone. I'll tell you why in a minute. Now, Apple Device Two, um, it's either going to be Shanann's Apple Watch or Chris's work phone, but we can't be 100% sure. Okay, which one it is. So we just need to bear that in mind. Um, there's another device on there for Sunday, HPD 07448. Looking at the, the MAC address, you know, after looking it up, it's manufactured by Hewlett Packard. I'd be very, very surprised if that's not a printer scanner. It's not. It's in the log, but it's not really relevant. Sunday, August 12th, 11.46, we see Shanann's iPad. Now, what's also important to know is when you see these entries in, you know, in, in this log file, it's not specifically that device doing anything. It's not, uh, it doesn't mean that that device or somebody is on that device and has just Googled something or somebody is on that device sending a text. These kind of log entries, these DHCP events, they tend to be when a device is, um, seeking a, an IP address, like a new IP address. It may be renewing its IP address. By default, 24 hours is when the device renews its lease for its IP address. 
it could just be a device coming out of sleep it could just be a device checking in apple devices are notorious for creating a lot of these um dhcip events in router logs you know for no particular reason so you know you can't ascertain exactly why that entry is in there for that device to be perfectly honest as i say it doesn't mean that that particular device is doing something on the internet um, it, as i say it could just be checking in to the router and the router's just saying yeah there you go there, there's your ip just to make sure it may be seeking a renewal of the ip which is every 24 hours by default which of course is a pattern which is something very important to look for when you're looking in router logs it's a pattern you know, if you see the same time, if a device is in the log and it's the same time, literally within a few same seconds every 24 hours, then you know that that is the time that the device is simply renewing its 24 hour IP address lease. OK, that's something very important to look for when you're looking in these log files. OK, so we see Shenan's iPad there, 1146. Of course, we know Shanann wasn't there, so you know, maybe was Chris on Shanann's iPad, or was it just you know an app in the background could could also trigger that kind of event, you know? Um, now then we see another Apple device. I've called Apple device one. I believe that's Chris's personal phone. I'll tell you why in a minute. But 12:15 on the Sunday, August 12th. Okay, we then just see some of those denial of service attacks being blocked by the router. 1.15 p.m. Sunday, August 12th is an Amazon device. All we had was the Mac. Now that down to an Amazon device. It's either going to be, I think it's probably the Echo. They had an Amazon Echo. It's in the discovery. It was recovered. But it could also be the Fire Stick. Now I know... Chris gave his fire stick to Troy on 10th of August. I don't know if he got it back. Potentially he did. Could be an Amazon fire stick. Could have been testing out Amazon fire stick. It's, it's not really relevant to anything anyway. Uh, still one sort of 143, 147 that on the Sunday. Um, we're given an entry for a, a certain MAC address which correlates to the manufacturer being Technicolor, CHUSA Inc. Now they are well known for making set-top boxes, um, you know, basically cable boxes for TV. Now, of course, we know that, bear with me one second. We know that Chris and Shannon had a satellite set up, they had a satellite dish on the back of the house. And I know it was mentioned in Discovery that uh, they were you know, going to try and use a fire stick to, as Shannon was saying, about reducing cable costs and that kind of stuff. So, you know, these devices, basically the, the devices that are showing up there in the log are set top boxes, cable boxes. And then there's an entry on the Sunday for the direct TV, which is of course another TV service, like a streaming service. Uh, there's an entry in there on the Sunday for what's called Cisco 04426, which I know is manufactured or going by the MAC address. I know it's manufactured by a company called Technicolor, sorry, by Wistron, Wistron New Web Corporation. And that particular block of MAC addresses, they are used for what's called multimedia over coax alliance adapters, or multimedia over coax alliance adapters. It's basically a um, coaxial cable to Ethernet adapter. It's really nothing interesting. So, you know, it would have been used for their TV service, basically. They probably have some old coax cable in the house and 
wanted to hook, hook it up to you know their normal Ethernet network, which we all use at home now. Coax is old old technology. So that's that. Then the first um, entry we see for what we believe to be Vivint. Now, all we had was a MAC address for this. Didn't have device name or anything like that, but that particular MAC address is made by a company called Sugar Electronics, and they do make the Vivint chips for the Vivint control panels. So, you know, it's quite safe to say it's probably going to be the Vivint system. The 446 is logged something it's logged you know it's logged an event you know, interesting as you'll see later on it didn't log anything when Shanann came home um so i don't know i don't know exactly what what's that what that's logged there next device going by the mac address is mobile company called lg Inotech. now they do make mobile cameras like dash cams and Home security cameras and stuff like that. So I'm not exactly sure on that one. I'm not 100% sure what that one is. Uh, but that was at 16.55 on Sunday. And it appeared again a bit later. Apple TV's in there. Again, Chris's personal phone. This is on the Sunday at like 9 o'clock. Printer. Now, the next Vivint entry on there is at... Of course, that'll be 10.52. Okay, now remember when I said it's important to look for patterns because an IP address is leased out to a device every 24 hours. So if you see that same time second every day, every 24 hours, then you know that particular time is just it. That is just that time of that that device is renewing its IP. Okay, it's renewing its IP address. So we can see that's on Sunday, 10.52. Now if we go forward to Monday at the same time. Where is it? There. Monday, August 13th, 20. Of course it had two hours. 22.52. Oh, four seconds. Go forward to the next day, Tuesday, 22.52.05 seconds. So that's basically its IP address being renewed. It's its IP lease time. Now I know some people have said that, uh, you know, that particular time that that Vivint was triggered was because Chris Watts triggered it by walking out of his house or playing the system or whatever. I would say, you know, to, to that person, you're completely wrong because that address IP is given to that system at the exact, within a few seconds time on the following day and on the following day. So it's simply an IP renewal. It's not been triggered by anything. It's just simply the time and date when the router goes, there you go, there's your next 24 hours for your IP address. That's why it's very important to look for patterns when you're looking at these kind of DHCP events in a, in a router log. It tells you a lot. When you see that 24 hour pattern, you know it's just simply renewing its IP. So we know that now about that entry on the Sunday August 12th, 10.52, wasn't triggered by anybody, it was simply an IP renewal. Okay, 11.20, see Chris's personal phone, okay, we see the Amazon, Chris's personal phone, lots of activity here, so this would have been around, you know, 1.11 to 1.35, you know, before, shortly before Shanann's getting home. And then very important thing here, 148, it logs Shanann's iPhone. Now that matches up perfectly, of course, with the time that she got home. OK, 
Okay. Now, we didn't know, it didn't tell us in the router interface that that was Shenan's iPhone, but looking at that, you know, it gives us the Mac. If you look that up, you can see it's an Apple device. And then you tie it in with the time, it matches exactly to when Shenan is getting home. You know, it, that's where you can kind of piece things together and, you know, be 99.9% .9 sure that that is that device or that was Shenan's iPhone. Okay, so after that, we see the Direct TV. You know, some people think, oh, why, you know, why, why are five minutes later from Shenan getting home is a Direct TV? coming on so first thing you do you think well okay let's look at any pattern is that device simply renewing its IP address say the way you can tell is if you look at the following day and the following day see if it is in the logs exactly the same time for the following few days so let's have a look that's Sunday August 12th so that's 2353 we know it's 153 let's have a look let's have a look for the next day so if we go forward to the Monday let's go forward to the Monday twenty three fifty three. 58. Let's go forward to the Tuesday. Okay, it's not there on the Tuesday. But it is there the following day. Let's have a look at the previous day. Let's have a look on. Well, actually, we can't, can we? So hang on. So we've got it on the Sunday, 2353. Let's look at the seconds. I mean, is it, is it exact same seconds, pretty much? Let's have a look. So it's 2353.55. On the, on the, so that would be Monday morning, wouldn't it? Because that'd be 153. 23.50, so that'd be 153.55. Let's look on the Monday. I know this is not very exciting, guys, but, you know, this is raw data and it, it, you can't argue with it. It's, uh, you know, it's irrefutable evidence, really, um, especially when you have, you know, 23.53.58. When you've got something like that, where it's, you know, to the five few seconds, you know, the next day, it's exactly the same entry. You know, it simply shows you that it's a renewal of its IP. So it's not like anyone came in and switched on, you know, she didn't, didn't switch on the TV. Or anything like that. It was simply renewing its IP at that point. Okay, so just looking back, so we're there. Um, any more significant entries? Um, not really. The next one, Shenan's iPad, 4:30 in the morning. And then, of course, we see lots of activity from Chris's Apple Watch. Now, you know, this would have been 5, 525, 5, 5.39, 5.41. And, of course, that fateful morning. So, we know, you know, we know he was busy walking around after the heinous act that he committed. So, uh, now, I know there was some other... You know, people were saying, why does the Apple TV um, come on 
at 7.51 when kind of nobody's in the house. Um, well, let's have a quick look. Let's, let's look for any patterns on that. Apple TV 5.51. Um, no, let's, let's look for the following day. Let's look for the Tuesday. See if there's anything in there. At 5.51. 5.54 Apple TV let's look for Wednesday there's nothing in there for Wednesday but interestingly look at this 5.51 in the evening. Now there are some devices which will seek an IP address every 12 hours as opposed to 24. So that's something else that you also have to bear in mind. So we have here 17.51.53. So then we add the two hours. Okay, so it's 7.51. 7.51 p.m. the Apple TV okay let's look when it next appears 7.51.53 on that morning so you're telling me exactly 12 hours exactly to the second the Apple TV picked up its IP and you're gonna you cannot tell me that that is not simply an IP renewal it's 12 hours to the second let's just see when it appears again Seven fifty-one fifty-three on the Monday. It's the exact same time again to the second. It's clearly just IP renewal, lease renewal traffic, guys. It's not the Apple TV hasn't been switched on. You know, that's why these logs are so misleading. You've got to look for these patterns, and you can't just look at it and you know figure out what someone's done and what a device has done or somebody's done with that device and map out the whole kind of events of people in that house it's just you can't do it you can't do it so just going back sorry just going back i've just lost myself a little bit here um so we had chinan's phone registering coming home um the Apple TV, you know, apparently coming on at um, 7.51 on the morning of Monday, August 13th. Well, we've now just determined that that is simply IP address renewal traffic, yeah? To the second, 12 hours before, to the second, 12 hours after. There's no dispute in that. Okay, we then see printer. Amazon again, of course we know you know Chris is uh Chris is not here anymore, he's left. You know, he's left the house. You know, the the direct TV again. You know, you can guarantee if you look at the log to the second that's gonna be I don't know if I've already spoken of that one, but to the second that's probably gonna be when you're with IP. Same with these. Okay, now this is interesting because 2.08, 2.08 p.m., Monday, August 13th, two Apple devices register. Now, if you look at the body cam footage of when Chris comes home, when the office is there, you'll see that it is exactly that time, 2.08, that he returns to the house. Now, two devices register. Now, one's got to be his personal phone, right? It's going to have his personal phone on him. 
which is why I've labeled that one as his personal phone. It's the one that appears most in the event, um, in the Google log and it's an Apple device. So the other one is either going to be his work phone or Shenan's Apple watch, right? So it's interesting because that would suggest that if that, if it is the Apple watch, he took the Apple watch with him. Now I know they didn't find it initially. It was found two days later, I believe on the 15th under the couch cushions where he put the phone. So he was obviously trying to hide it, whether he hid it later or not, I don't know. But um, as I say, you can't be 100% sure. You know, we know it's an Apple device, so it could possibly be his work phone. But, you know, it's interesting that it's picked up at that, that exact time that he comes home, those two devices. So could it have been an Apple Watch? Maybe. Maybe. And then also, interestingly, 214 Shinan's iPhone registers. If you look at the body cam footage of when they turn, when they find Shinan's phone and turn it on, you'll see that that's the exact time. So it's switched on because it's just been switched on. It's registered, it's IP. And then after that, you know, you see, you see Chris's um, personal phone again, his Apple Watch. Shenan's iPhone again, you know, they're probably looking through her phone still and stuff like that. Um, Chris's Apple Watch, Shenan's iPad. Um, you know, and, and everything after that's kind of not really relevant anyway, obviously, you know, police are there and, and everything. So the main point's really, um, you know, because one thing I know that's been has been stated is that this Vivint, um, this first or that this Vivint entry on Sunday evening at 10:52, you know, it's Vivint picking up Chris Watts walking out of his house, walking into his house, you know, because he's on the phone and he's walked out and he's triggered Vivint and he's maybe playing around with Vivint. If it's not that hard to turn off cameras, right? You can do it from the control panel. You can just switch off your cameras from there. There's no, uh, it's, it's not difficult. The one thing I don't think you can switch off because we've obviously we've still got that footage is the doorbell cam. He maybe tried to switch that off, but you know, it, it didn't work. Obviously did it. I'm pretty sure, you know, that's there as a fail safe. You know, if a burglar breaks in your back, and then disables everything, that's no good, is it? So, you know, I think that's pretty much fail safe back to the cloud. Um, but as I say, this uh, this entry here, 20.52 plus your two hours, 10.52, you know, it's been suggested that it's been triggered by Chris, you know, walking out the house or meeting someone or whatever. As I proved, 2052.02, look at his next entry. Twenty fifty two oh four on the Monday. Twenty fifty two oh five on the Tuesday. It's simply an IP address renewal. You're telling me that the state for three days on the trot to the second someone's triggering that camera, I'd say that's impossible. It's not impossible, but the probability is probably one in a zillion. It's simply IP address being renewed. Okay. The other thing is, you know, people, it's been suggested that before that happened, you know, there's all this suspicious activity going on. You know, these Synax scans, DOS attacks, you know, it's somebody logging in to it's secure logins for um, Vivint and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's absurd. It's absurd. It's just simple 
what they call denial of service attacks that are being blocked by the Netgear router. Often it, Netgear routers are notorious for doing this, blocking false, what they call false positives, where it's not actually any kind of threat or attack, it's just sort of network traffic. You know, when you're on the internet, you get servers that will ping your router and all sorts of stuff. You know, you get like adverts come up and stuff. That's how they get your IP. And, um, you know, all of this stuff in here, nothing suspicious about it at all. At all. Simply the router. And the fact is it's blocking. In fact, it's logging it. It's telling you it's blocked that communication. So there's absolutely nothing, um, nothing suspicious about that whatsoever. Now, don't forget that um, the you know the the investigators and the agents involved in this case they got the full um, reports from Verizon from AT and T, uh, you know, which show you basically everything. They'll show you, you know, which cells and which towers and that, that phone connected to and that, certainly if you're driving with a phone it they can almost map out exactly where you've driven um you know by that by those kind of records the data that they hold cell providers is unbelievable like i say each kind of satellite has different um, cells on it it may have three or four one side three or four another you know, they can actually, this, the mobile providers can tell you which side of the satellite mast that the phone uh, kind of pinged off. You know, from that, they can almost, as you're traveling, map exactly which direction you've gone, at what time, and all that kind of stuff. And that's all in, that's all in the discovery. It's all in there that, um, you know, they got all that information. They're not going to, uh, they haven't released it all, of course. But um, let me just see if I can uh, if I can find that for you. Just bear me one second. Yeah, so I mean, look at this. This you know, this is a um, court order for production of records. This is for you know to sell co-partnership DBA Veros and wireless records were received on first of October two thousand eighteen. You know, they said that they continued um, investigating all this information. This is early October. You know, this you got the 3G and 4G um, records. You know, calls phone number, cell site incoming, outcoming details, account deactivation dates, TDR to IP sessions with the cell site. So it's like cool explanation for everything. I mean, you know, this guy's that's an absolute thorough forensic analysis of Nicole Kessinger's phone. It's going to have every single cell and every single mobile phone tower that she would have hit. And they've done it from 12th of June through to 15th of August. So trust me, if she was driving from her house to to Chris's house or was anywhere near that house you know for, for, for any suspicious length of time during the time of uh, for the murders it's all going to be in that data trust me the FBI know what they're doing and they're not going to release all this information you know there seems to be a lot of sense of entitlement to what people should uh, should be allowed to see, but um, trust me, trust me, they would have looked through all of that just to make sure, and that would have told them exactly where she was and at what time. So you know, I think you need to have faith in the FBI and the CBI and the Federal Police that they do actually know what they're doing. But um, I hope this wasn't too boring for you. But um, I think it's cleared up a few things, hopefully. And uh, you know, I hope that um, using my experience and knowledge, that um, 
I've cleared up a few things for you, so um, thanks for watching.